Now let's go do the rotation. The rotation is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to copy this and paste it twice. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this. W A S D movement forward left right back. And it's important to comment out your code in case other people you're working with need to change the code for some reason. It's good to have comments in there so they understand what they're doing and what happens where. This is going to be rotation using Q and E. So we're going to change this to Q and E. Then we're going to get rid of this whole line altogether. Here we're just going to put transform dot rotate and then we're going to put in zero comma time dot delta time times rotate speed comma zero parenthesis semicolon what this is doing is it's saying don't rotate on the x-axis don't rotate on the z-axis rotate on the y-axis and we're actually going to use this as our e-rotation as well except we're going to change q's rotate speed to be negative so that it rotates the other direction. Now if we build this and we go back to Unity and we play oh you can see we kinda rotate. We rotate really slowly though. So we want to up our rotation speed. So if we go back to Visual Studio we can change ro rotate speed to be 50 or something like that. Or what's really cool with Unity is we can go to the player and you see the script here we can get rid of this. We see the script here and we've got our values. We can actually change it by dragging or by putting something else in here without having to go into the script and change it. This is really useful for debugging purposes. So that's still a little slow. We can actually change this during runtime of the game. So if we put 50 in here, let me go back to the game, you can see We've got a rotation, it's really slow still. So why don't we try like a hundred? I'd say that's pretty good for a rotation. Now we've got a nice little smooth rotating cube that moves forward and backward and looks almost like a little car. I will warn you though. If you change it during runtime, if you change this number during runtime and you go to click out, it's going to revert back. This is the same with any settings you change during runtime. So we're going to want to set that as 100. That seems like a good number. And we can go back to the script and change it to 100 as well because we found a number that works. And next we're going to do the jump. Now jumping I'm going to do a little differently. I'm actually going to use physics to make it look like it's actually jumping up and then falling down. So we can use this and instead of E we're actually going to do space and this is the key for the space bar. And if you want to look up these keys there's a lot of information online. We are not going to use this. Instead we're going to do transform dot rigid body because we want to use physics. And we want to add force vector 3 up times jump speed. Vector 3 up just is the vector that's pointing directly up. Now this means if my cube was to roll over and I hit jump it would still jump up. So we can build this, go back to unity, start up our scene. If I change it to 20 I can actually hit it and it'll do this right but if I hold it down it'll just go up and it won't come down now we don't want to be able to hold jump and then it just keeps going up forever so what we can do is get key down what we want for space is we only want it to register when we hit it down when we push it down not when we're holding it so we can change it to get key down 
So we can build this. Go back to Unity. Start it up. And we hold it down. But our jump speed is back down to 10. So we can change this to like 150. You saw when we hold it down, there we go. It's jumping. But even though I'm holding it down, it doesn't keep going up. 150 is not quite enough. Let's do 200. I like that. So we want to change this to 200. So we can go back to our script, change it to 200. And I want to show you something that might trip you up while you're doing this. If you're editing values in the script, but you're not editing values in the inspector here, when you press play, if you see here, the jump speed is still 10, even though I changed it in the script and I built it. What you need to do is you need to reset it, and then it will reset all the values to what the script is. And now our jump works. So now we have a player controller where we can move forward, left, right, rotate, and jump. And we can move backwards and jump. This is pretty much a basic player controller. We can get into more detailed stuff later, but uh, for the most part, this is your movement. That's about all I have to say for this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. We talked about player controllers. We talked about how you can get inputs, and we got into scripting a little bit more. I also showed you how to move a player forward, left, right, back, jump, and rotate. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about the input manager and I'm going to show you how you can do this WASD layout and the arrow keys at the same time really easily. Thanks for watching guys and I'll talk to you later.